The Mark Rogers TV and SEC breakdown looking at the Arkansas defensive line with my guy Chad Neepling. You can join him on Gridiron now and with me on SEC Breakdown. Join us on Twitter and on Facebook. So, Chad, we were talking uh, before we hit the record button about this uh, Razorback defensive line. You got some players here, but a kid that we haven't seen yet. And when I say kid, I mean by the, the age standpoint. <laughs> McDelvin, a game out of Hope, Arkansas, third-rated defensive lineman coming out of high school. And you've talked to this kid up close and personal, and uh, he's a pretty special story and a special player. Yeah, I really like McDelvin a lot. He comes from a very, um, a very, very, I guess it's a very background. He has a, uh, he's had to deal with a lot. I mean, at one point in his life, basically um, being homeless with his mother, uh, raised by his grandmother and his aunt. Um, just a very humble kid, very, um, very spiritually uh, centered. And, uh, you know, his grandmother instilled a lot uh, of traditional um, aspects in him as far as, you know, what aids to him being so humble. You know, he's, he appreciates everything that was given to him and he's just very centered and grounded. And I think it has a lot to do with his grandmother's presence in his life. He talks about that. Um, you know, Saif, he's one of those guys that uh, walks softly but carries a big stick type of guy. He doesn't, you know, he's not going to be really uh, a big, loud, verbal guy, but he's a guy that whenever he gets on the field, um, and, I mean, it's just watching Fury break loose. I mean, he's just an absolute monster coming off the field. Um, when he launches off that line, I'm talking about divots for flying out from his cleats. He's an extremely – a uh, powerful guy at 18 years old to be up to about 280 or so already. Uh, he came in early this spring, um, was again rated a five-star coming out of high school. I mean, he had big offers, Notre Dame. He had a ton of offers from across the country that were after him. He was, went out to the opening, um, you know, and he had a really good experience there. Um, and, you know, he joked at the fact that I had a chance to interview him when he got back from that, and he joked about the fact that they wouldn't let him go up against Greg Little uh, the five-star offensive lineman that committed to Ole Miss. He said, man, they just wouldn't let me go up against him. And, and I said, why do you think that is? He said, man, they just didn't want me to make him look bad. And that was really kind of his, you know, that's that's really his thing is that he, um, you know, he knows what he's capable of. He's got really good hand technique. He's really explosive. I think Roy Seagrass has just been really talking, uh, you know, just, you know, mounds about this guy. The upside is there. you got to think he's 18 right now. Um, and as being as explosive as he is, knowing what he came from, he's very driven. Um, the guy knows that, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for him. And when he gets on the field, man, all that angst and everything that he's dealt with his entire life, it, it comes out in his play. So he's a very emotional player, but again, very grounded, very humble. Um, he's a guy, Mark, I, I told you before we got on here, they're going to have a hard time keeping him. Uh, out of that starting rotation in, in uh, you know, come October. He's already in the two deep, but, I mean, you could possibly look at him being a starter come October. Chad, I think we both estimate that he and Little are going to go at it uh, when it counts for a whole lot. I'm going to guess three times. I would like to be able to say four, but I, I think it's going to be three times before they both move on to the NFL. Uh, but we'll see Ole Miss and Arkansas and those two guys go at it, and that should be a whole lot of fun. So, Looking forward to seeing him go crazy. A couple of productive veterans coming back that Arkansas fans have already seen a whole lot from. Jeremiah Ledbetter at seven and a half sacks. Uh, actually tackles for loss. couple sacks. Dietrich Wise is a kid that's got 13 career sacks. Uh, he's made some big plays uh, against the passing game as well. Just kind of run through the personnel across the defensive front for us in regards to what we can expect this fall. Yeah, this year, Arkansas, you know, Rob Smith and, and these guys, and, and again, Roy Seagrass, the defensive line coach, um, they've got a lot to work with this year. I mean, you got a lot of bodies. you got Juco transfer, Katarius Marks, who's going to be in at the defensive tackle. you got B. John Jackson, who's going to be in um, in that 2D rotation. You're talking about Taiwan Johnson at the tilted nose position. I'm a guy who has, you know, had some pretty explosive, you know, seasons himself. It was kind of quiet this last season, but – the season before, I mean, he had some explosive games at about 295, which was kind of, you know, 290, 295, which some people kind of thought that was on the small side. But, man, he has an ability to get in there and get in that backfield as an explosive player as he is. Um, you talk about Jermichael Winston, Dietrich Wise on the end on one side and two deep rotation. 
you turn around and you look at McTelvin and, and Tevin, you know, being him on the other end, possibly that's going to be your two deep. But this line this year is extremely deep, and, and and it has, and it's not just that it's deep in bodies; it's deep in uh, guys that legitimately have a shot uh, to make big plays for Arkansas. And when you have that type of pressure up here, I know some people like to make the comparison to the 2014 team um, that Bielema had and that defense that they had. I think this defense, that de- this defensive line, could be much better. Um, and it's a defensive line. You know, we know Bielema's style of play. It's it's punch you in the nose, punch you in the mouth type of thing. And they're going to keep coming at you in four quarters. They're going to swing at you regardless if they're winning or losing. They're going to come at you. And so I think with this type of depth on the defensive line, um, you can look for a, a probably some really good defensive stands. There won't be a bend, don't break. It's going to be we're coming after you. You better protect your quarterback. So um, I think you can see some big-time plays coming out of this defensive line. Again, on one DN, you're going to look at Wise. You're going to look at Winston uh, doubled up on one end. You're going to have Beano McGee, uh, you know, again, on the other end. You're going to tie one playing tilt. It would be John Jackson back there. And you're going to have Ledbetter, Datrion Dean, which is another guy, uh, the Terry Smarks. Uh, Armand Watts is a guy that people don't talk a lot about, but he's another guy that's possibly going to take some steps. People have been talking about him getting into rotation this year. So think about that. How many cats that is, it's going to be, you're talking about at least 10 guys um, that you can rotate in and out on the defensive line. I think this defensive line could be one of the more talented units in the SEC uh, Western Division this year. And it's probably right now it's flying under the radar. But I promise you, by the time October gets here and that Alabama game kicks off in Fayetteville, Arkansas, people might be learning about this defensive line uh, fairly in depth. Yeah, it's definitely flying under the radar and considering some of the issues at linebacker in 2015 that may carry over into 2016, a lot expected and needed from this defensive front to kind of avoid some of the issues that they had in terms of total defense and wearing down late in the season against the likes of Ole Miss and Mississippi State in particular. Don't want to see any more 50 spots given up in SEC play. That, that would not be good toward winning an SEC West. No, not at all. And I, honestly, I don't know that you're going to see that this year. The linebacking, we'll do a linebacking breakdown at one point. But uh, when we do talk about it, just kind of leading on to that position, there's a lot more depth at that position this year. And when I say depth, I'm talking about guys that actually played it, coming that played it either in the JUCO ranks or played it in high school. And that makes a difference. Last year, there were so many injuries and the depth was so shallow. We're literally having to use guys like Bell – who is a defensive end, having to convert him to the linebacking position just to feel so you can have bodies out there on the field to play. So I think if you look at this year, there's depth all across the board on the defensive side. Yes, the linebacking position is going to be in question, but the secondary is coming of age, and we know there's a lot of talent back there. Um, and you turn around and you look at this defensive front, when you got a guy like Wise who racked up seven, you know, seven sacks in the month of November – and uh, did it against top 25 teams, if he comes off and he's able to capitalize from that performance and they start out quickly, which they're going to have to because they have TCU in week two in Fort Worth, uh, who's going to have a salty defense as well. And by the way, they were picked to finish second in the Big 12 um, and so uh, for this year. So that's going to be a very, a very physical game. But I think the defense – because we know the offense is probably going to have to be a little bit slower to start possibly with some new faces. The defense is going to have to show up early for Arkansas in key games versus TCU and A&M in September. And uh, I think this unit can do it. Um, it's just a matter of can we can they pick up with the pace that we saw them do in November and start out early enough uh, to be able to get some wins early on in September. SEC Breakdown is the place to find both uh, Chad and myself on Twitter, on Facebook. Join us there. We'll get you all set for the uh, 2016 SEC season. And uh, as you can hear, Chad's uh, got us all set in terms of Arkansas's effort on the defensive front. Chad, it's always a pleasure, man. 